Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Uh, a few years ago I turned a yarn bowl. Uh, I need to turn another one so I thought I would uh, go ahead and make a video of it because a lot of y'all don't go back and watch videos that are several years old. This video is not going to be about so much about bowl turning as specifically about some of the ins and outs on uh, making a yarn bowl. Yard, <laughs> yarn, yarn bowl. So uh, I went out and looked at the rough turn bowls I already had because I've got a number of them. This one's dated 2017, 2015, 2000, 2000, can't tell, maybe 14, maybe, maybe uh, 19, I don't know. In any case, uh, so I looked at the three, three uh, likely candidates. Uh, this one I rejected because it had this uh, little bit of a knot hole defect, which, which I could fix, but it was a little bit larger. Uh, but I didn't want to go to the trouble of fixing that. The other one which I really like and would like to use is this uh, lovely Bradford Pear. Uh, it's big enough. It's wide enough. The problem was I made the bottom shape a little bit too much like, a, like a, I would a, nor a normal bowl, but I want a fairly flat a bowl so this thing will have a lot of stability. So that leaves this other candidate, uh, uh, Maple, which was turned uh, again 2015. So you can tell I've rough turned a lot of bowls and I'm not real keen on bowl turning as much anymore, but this was a good candidate. So that's the one we're going to use. First thing we're going to do is, is we're going to true up the, the tenon. I'm, I think I'm going to do that by just placing it. Well, actually, I think I'm going to make a feature on here that will uh, better better handle the bottom. So let's do that. So I'm going to start making a jam chuck. I got this scrap of uh, maple. It's a spindle scrap, so I'll be turning it from large to small, just like any other spindle. I'm just going to round over the profile to better fit the, uh, the bottom edge of that bowl. I'll get the speed up a little bit. And I'm just going to round over this edge a little bit. And then I want to make sure that that bottom is uh, somewhat recessed. Okay. So I should be ready to go. Let's go ahead and bring up my tail stock, mount that bowl, and I can tell from the stain marks here, uh, you know, I've got plenty of room, I've got, it looks like almost three-eighths of an inch gap between the two, so all I've got to do is true it up. This is a dovetail uh, tenon that I need to true up, let's just see how far off that is, just to get some idea, pretty close, pretty close, comes in, pretty close. Okay, that's that's good. I'm going to use two different. I'm going to use a uh, bowl gouge to just start that cleanup process. Just screw it up. Draw it back. Now I'm going to switch to a detail gouge be able to uh, better do that that profile this just works better for me slightly bring it in bring it back make sure the chuck will mount on the outside of a flat area and then I'm just going to nip that corner there okay so now I've got that tendon in good shape now I'm going to go ahead and finish the outside of the bowl and again this I'm just going through the operation here. Let's round it. I want to bring this in just a little bit. Um, so to do that, I guess I need to see where it's a bit of an oval shape. I need to figure out how much of that's going to go away. Now we're just going to bring this around. I'm, I'm not going to uh, do much on that very bottom because I want it, want, want it to stay flat. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel. Okay. 
so I got a nice smooth surface on that I'm happy with that uh, I'm gonna put a bead I think on the outside but I think I can do that later or maybe I'll skip the bead actually I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the bead on there now but to do that I've got to kind of flatten this rim a little bit so I'm just gonna come in and just come in from the back side a little bit and just add a little tiny little little bead feature I'm going to mark that first with this where I'm going to do that with this point tool Now I'm going to come in with my detail gouge and just come up under it. And that'll add to the uh, the view of it being being enclosed. I think. Now I'm just going to round over that edge just a bit and come in there with a bit of a shield straight. And I've got just a little bit of a line there I want to get rid of. Do that with this shear scraper. I can just get right into that corner. Right there. Right there. Okay. I like that. I think that looks good. I'm going to go go ahead and sand it uh, because in addition I think I'm going to decorate this when I'm when I'm finished to add a little detail. I'm going to use some pyrography and the Zen tangle, so I think I'm going to put a a couple of burn burn lines on it. But first I need to go ahead and sand this. When it comes to designs, you've got a lot of options, but uh, I think a, a popular size is about five and a half to six and a half inches. Some people like them a little bit a little bit larger. Uh, the walls, they can be three-eighths of an inch. They could go on up to three-quarters of an inch. Uh, the thinner walls are easier to put the J-hook on it. Uh, thicker walls give it a little more stability. All right, I'm going to decorate this one. So I'm going to just mark a line here where I'm going to do the, do the uh, Zentangle inside. So I'm going to mark that. And now I'm just going to take a point tool and I'm just going to go ahead and put a tiny V groove there to use for my uh, burn burn wire get the speed up a little bit more just come in here just enough to hold that burn wire it's a guitar string with a ball on each end and it probably could be a little bit longer but I think this will do. I use this mostly for spindle work. I'm getting the speed up a little bit. It'll stand out of the way, but it's, I can't see it go anywhere. But you need a little bit of speed to mark this burn. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and turn this thing around. So we're going to use this large Titan chuck with a little larger uh, jaws. We want to tighten it snug. Don't want to clamp it down so tight it crushes the fibers. And again, I want to enclose this, so I'm going to change that shape. It might be a little thicker at the top, a little thinner down here. So I'm going to brace it. Come straight in with the, uh, you know, the bevel straight on. Make that entry cut. I'm going to come in slightly. Alright, anchor the tool, ride the bevel. And uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and round, round this off just a little bit. Drop the handle, scrape it, and 
a little little bit of bump in the bottom. I'm going to come back here with this uh, negative break scraper with a just sharpened edge to get rid of that little bump. Down, up, and across. Down, up, and across. And that's that's good. Sanding will take care of the rest of it. And you got a little bit of a ridge on the inside here. Let me see if I can clean that up. Lift the negative brake scraper up and just come into that, that bit of edge there. Don't do this with a regular scraper or you'll have a disaster. All right, while it's still on the lathe is when we're going to do our cutting. Uh, and the trick, and here's the tricky part, this is where you're paying all the big bucks for, is is the designing this this J hook where the, that the yard will go in the dark area and not touch anything uh, uh, rough. You want to do it on side side grain, not the end grain. Right between, okay, and cut this thing. I've seen, I've watched a lot of videos and. And if you're doing production work, uh, there's an Oct there's an issue, and I think it's October 2014 American Wood Turner, where someone made a jig so they could do a bunch of these and cut this with a router. Uh, other people have used various uh, Dremel accessory tools. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Kenneth Gunnell, who uh, commented on my videos over the years, and he suggested getting a special coping foot for a, a saber saw and do it but for me i think what's going to work best is just a uh, coping saw so let me lock this down now your design on the s hook very very well may be different uh, i'm going to drill a hole i better mark it with an awl and i'm using 5 16 of an inch uh, yours could be larger i figured i could always make the the hole slightly larger manually but i can't make it smaller so i've got a, i'm going to use a brad point bit so i can feel it when it starts to come through i'm coming in at, uh, perpendicular to the surface of the wood i think i'm beginning to feel it break through okay now i got the tip back out now, so I don't have any tear out, I'm going to go ahead and turn this in the other direction. I'm going to come in a little bit of an angle here. And that's a nice smooth, smooth hole. Set the drill aside, bring it back, and now the challenging part is going to be using a coping saw. Probably should use a pencil and then transfer it with, with ink. Uh, I don't want to get that wood too thin or it'll flex and possibly break. Maybe it's just me, but drawing this X, uh, this J can be pretty tricky. Definitely do it all in pencil before you come back and mark it in, in uh, a Sharpie or something. I'm going to have to sand off this line here or incorporate it in my Zentangle design. So basically, you know, sketch out some ideas on how you want your whole overall bowl to look if you're going to do any decoration. All right, so here goes. Now I'm going to come back in from the other side. Okay. All right, I think I've got it. Now all I've got to do is to, uh, to sand it. I've got some fairly rough edges, so I think what I'm going to do first is use a Dremel tool. Okay, I've got my rotary tool. I call it a Dremel. It's actually Black & Decker. And it's got this uh, high-speed steel carving, or, or carving burr. So I'm going to come in and come in as best I can from the bottom, and then we'll turn it around and maybe see how's the best way to do it. I'm going to use a low speed and, and, and guide it with my fingers. 
Bring it toward me. Now let me show you a great sanding trick. Okay, you're going to get you a, a strip of cloth backed uh, a J, J cloth. Oh, maybe inch, maybe inch and a quarter, whatever you got. This comes out of a Clingsport bargain box. Uh, make it about nine, ten inches long. We're going to turn it over. We're going to cut from the back side. We're going to mark an area that we're not going to cut. We're not going to cut past an inch or so on each side. Then we're going to cut once down the middle. And then we're going to split that. So these are going to be about a quarter of an inch strips. I'm simply going to cut along the line. My cutting board. Okay. Now, here's where the magic comes. We're simply going to take this and twist it like this. And then we've got sanding all the way around. And now we can we can take this, round over the edges, get in this hole, round over the edges, okay we just about got it. Craft sticks with a little sandpaper glued or wrapped around them will also help uh, on flat areas, which is one of the best ways to get it really smooth on the flat areas. Okay, I've got it all sanded up. I'm going to put on my vacuum chuck, bring up the tailstock support, live center. Always remember to leave that little, little indentation to make it easier to, to center when you're reversing your bowl. Now we're just going to come straight in and take care of getting rid of that. I'll get the speed up to, oh, maybe 800, and I'm not even going to turn on the vacuum just yet. I'm just going to come in. I had a little texture feature to the bottom of the bowl for interest, and I used a pyrography technique called Zentangle around the uh, similar to this project in this chessboard to decorate the outside uh, rim. The two small holes are for the knitting needles to come through for storage and I use a little Minwax antique oil to finish the project off before I buffed it. So if you turn a few bowls get out of your shop and turn a yarn bowl it makes a great great gift. If you haven't turned a few bowls you might be interested in checking out this playlist on on bowl turning. Y'all stay safe come on back here.